Maintaining the security of your wallet is an important part of any seed or password recovery. There are two simple ways you can go about managing these risks. The first is to make sure that you only run these tools with your computer entirely offline, like all network connections disconnected and only reconnect networking after you have sent all of the funds out of the recovered wallet. The other option is to run a live operating system on a USB stick and to keep it totally offline when you're doing the recovery. So in this video, I'm just gonna run through how to install and run uh, Ubuntu as a live operating system just off a USB stick. And I'm also gonna run through what you need to do to install everything you need to be able to run BTC Recover in that environment. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So basically this video is just gonna have a few parts. I'm just gonna run through how to install and run uh, Ubuntu Live, uh, just installing it onto a USB stick. I'm also gonna run through how to uh, install all the dependencies for BTC Recover. And I'll just finish the video with just you know a basic recovery just for like a Cardano wallet that's missing a one of the seed words. All right, so first thing we need to do is download Ubuntu. So you just wanna to go to ubuntu.com uh, and go through to downloads. Now, the thing that we want to download is Ubuntu desktop, because that'll give you a nice graphical environment. And we want the latest LTS release. That stands for long-term support. So basically these LTS versions actually change a lot less regularly than uh, these other releases of Ubuntu. And they're basically just easier to support for tools like BTC Recover. So I always try to make sure that uh, BTC Recover will work with the latest uh, Ubuntu LTS release. So we're just gonna click on that. There we go, and we can just save that wherever we want. All right, so while that's downloading, we'll just go to the documentation on how to create a bootable USB stick. Now, this documentation is for Windows. The process is gonna be slightly different uh, for Ubuntu, but I will include links to all three in the description. And uh, if in doubt, uh, the search on their website works pretty well too. So there you go, they all just come up. So anyway, but basically for this, what we're gonna to need to do is we are going to need to make sure that we have a USB stick that is four gigs or larger. Now, the one thing you need to be aware of with this USB stick is this process is going to involve wiping the USB stick. So all data that is currently on it will be lost. So make sure that you copy any data that you wanna keep off the USB stick before doing this process. You need to be on Windows XP or later for this exact guide. Um, we're gonna need this tool here, Rufus. So I'll just open that in a new tab. There it is. So we'll just download that. We'll just download the latest version. Close the ad. And it's only small, so we'll just hit save. And there we go. So that's downloaded and that's still coming. And the Ubuntu ISO is still downloading. So those downloads are done. Uh, if we just click this icon here, that'll just take us straight to our downloads folder. We can then just click on uh, rufus.exe and there we go. So from here, if I connect the USB stick, it will detect it automatically. There it is. So I've just connected a random 32 gig one I had lying around. So we'll click select, choose the ISO for Ubuntu that we downloaded and we're basically just going to leave everything as defaults. And the thing I'll mention here is while you could create a persistent partition on here, so that would have data that would be preserved between reboots, that's actually not what we want. Um, for running BTC Recover, uh, we want the operating system to wipe uh, itself every time we hit restart. Now, the only time I think it makes sense to use persistence when you're trying to use a live operating system for BTC Recover is if you're planning to do something like uh, install Ubuntu to install all the requirements for BTC Recover and all of that, uh, possibly on a different PC, or if you're planning to do something like install all of those requirements uh, onto the sort of persistent live Ubuntu, shut everything down, remove the networking cards, disconnect hard drives, uh, and you know physically air gap the machine to a much greater degree uh, than simply disabling networking or unplugging uh, all networking interfaces while you're running. The key thing to keep in mind if you're using a persistent volume is to absolutely make sure that you uh, securely dispose of the USB stick once you're done. So we'll just leave all the stuff as the defaults and we will just say start. 
we'll just go with the recommended ISO mode too. It'll warn us again that it's going to be wiped. So again, if in doubt, unplug any other USB sticks or uh, drives you have plugged in at this point and we'll say OK. So once that's done, we'll just say close and our USB stick is ready to go. So from here, you can actually just try the try Ubuntu before you install it process. I'll put a link for that in the description and we're just going to say we want to boot from a USB flash drive. Now again, this step is going to depend very much on your PC. So whatever your PC does to be able to let you bring up a boot menu, uh, that's what you're going to have to do. On a lot of PCs, it's F12. That will vary depending on your system. And it's especially different on Macs, but the process for a Mac is covered uh, in the Ubuntu documentation here. Now, before we boot into live Ubuntu, it's worth saying that uh, Ubuntu Linux is a distribution of Linux that is very common. It's well documented. It's well reviewed and well supported. It's been around for a long time. So you could reasonably uh, just run it as is with your other uh, hardware like hard drives and things connected. However, depending on the size of your recovery, depending on how cautious you want to be, you might also consider uh, disconnecting all of the hard drives that are in your PC. So there can be uh, no communication between the live operating system that you are booting and the other storage uh, mediums on your PC. Okay, so when we get to here, we just want to say we want to try Ubuntu. So just here we are on the desktop of our live install. And uh, if you've got Wi-Fi, you will need to connect to your Wi-Fi at this point. But I'm just connected hardwired, so we'll just click on the browser. And we'll just firstly go to the documentation for BTC Recover. And essentially, we're just following the bouncing ball for the Ubuntu installation. So we'll just go into the installation and texting, and we'll click on Linux. So basically, we'll just click here and just say terminal. And we can literally just copy and paste from the documentation. So we'll install Python 3TK. We also can install pip. But the thing that you'll notice for a live install of Ubuntu is it's going to say this error package Python 3 pip has no installation candidate. So before we can successfully install pip uh, in Ubuntu live, we're going to have to run this command here, which will enable uh, the sort of universe repository. So that's a broader set of repositories for Ubuntu. So we'll just paste that in there. There we go. So now if we try and run this command again, it will work just fine. There we go. It's going to install a bunch of stuff. We can also just download the latest master from BTC Recover. We'll just say we want to save the file. And then if we go into the BTC recover folder, we can just say we want to extract here. And basically here is our BTC recover folder. Now I've noticed a lot of people have trouble sort of navigating around the command line and getting to the right folder. So what we'll do in this case actually is we'll close this terminal we had before and we'll right click in the download folder and we'll just say open in terminal. And that'll actually take us straight to the correct folder uh, with BTC Recover and all the files we want. So from here, we can actually just install all the requirements that BTC Recover needs. So if we go back to the documentation, we can literally just copy and paste the command here. We'll just say requirements.txt, though in this case, I'll actually change that to say full, just because that'll download some additional requirements to do recovery for things like ETH key store files, uh, Grostal coin, and some other more obscure recoveries. Uh, most of the time, all you need is just what's in requirements.txt, just for seed recoveries and most wallet recoveries, but uh, we'll just download the whole lot. Okay, so everything is installed. So from here, we can just run the uh, test to make sure everything works properly. We'll just test our installation with this command here, and I'll paste that 
Now, the important thing that I'll just point out here is these, this command for testing your installation assumes you're running it on Windows. So if you're running in Linux, you'll actually need to change that from saying Python to make it say Python 3. And the same is true for all of the commands that you're going to run in BTC Recover. So whenever you see a command that starts with Python, if you're running in uh, Ubuntu Live or other Linux distributions, uh, just replace that with Python 3. And then we'll hit Enter. And there we go. So that is just a sea of green. So we'll just let that run for a minute. All right, and then we can see, so all of the tests have been passed. So from this point, uh, BTC Recover is now fully installed and ready to go. So from this point onwards, our live booted Ubuntu system is gonna be staying totally offline. Uh, so you need to make sure you disable your networking, disable the Wi-Fi, unplug your network cable. Uh, however you have it connected to the network, you need to make sure it is disconnected. Do not skip this step and do not just run it online. And look, just to be doubly sure that we are offline, we can just try pinging one of Google's DNS servers. So we'll just type in ping 8.8.8.8 .8 and hit enter. And uh, the message we want to see is network is unreachable, okay? So if for any reason it, it is working and you're getting replies uh, from that ping, then you have not disabled your networking. You need to make sure you do that. All right, and I'll just demo a basic recovery. So from here, you would just say, you know, Python 3 seed recover.py and it'll run just the same as it will in any of my other videos. So we'll just say cancel. And look, I'll just say it's a Cardano wallet. Uh, we don't have to worry about an extended public key for that. And look, we'll just put it in an address. That's our wallet address there. And we'll put in our best guess of the seed. And look, I'll just delete one of the words as well. So basically, this is a pretty common sort of recovery where someone's just missed one of the words in their seed. And we just say, okay. There we go. So again, just for basic recoveries like this, where you know one of the words was missing, it finds it in a couple of minutes, and that's pretty straightforward. So from here, my suggestion would be that you would actually copy this live seed down just on a notepad and paper. Uh, you know, don't just save it to a USB stick or something like that. Once you've transcribed the recovered seed, uh, it's as simple as just turning off your live operating system and uh, that will just automatically wipe everything. So from here, after you've removed the USB stick, uh, if you want to be extra cautious, you could choose to destroy that USB stick completely and uh, then you could just uh, reboot back into your normal desktop environment on that PC. I think it's generally a good idea to securely dispose of the USB stick once you're done, uh, but that is especially important if you're choosing to install Ubuntu and to run a persistent partition uh, as well. So there you go. Running a live boot of Ubuntu without any persistence enabled is a fantastic way to significantly improve the security of any recovery that you might be trying to do. An important precaution to have any time that you're handling your seed phrase directly. If you run into any issues, just leave a comment. I do my best to answer all of the comments. And look, if you get totally, totally stuck, uh, you know, I also do have options available for a private sessions uh, where I can sort of help walk you through this just uh, over a video call. Best of luck and stay safe. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.